before I go into giving my account, allow me to introduce my staff, a great bunch of young people that I have the opportunity to serve with at the National Oil Company. And so our controller, is the Rich Manjala, is right there. And our in-house counsel, Councillor Vachu, is also here with us. Mr. Tim Jarrett, everything technical. You won't know about Noka, that's the guy we'll be asking. And our internal control man is right there, also is here with us. And our human resource manager, Mapu, is also here. And of course, my good friend, Jake, he's our procurement man, making sure we spend Noka on his right. But it's an honor for me to be here especially in this historic room, named after the late Charles Bayer, one of Liberia's historical best renowned journalists. And so we've come today to lay rumors to rest. For some time now, some media houses have had a few days Say that I've squandered. Sometimes I hear six hundred thousand, other times I hear four hundred thousand, and different sorts of things. But we've come here today to give you the facts. So, in light of recent reports published by certain media outlets, it has become necessary to address the misinformation and spear campaign directed at myself and the esteemed office of the officer in charge at the National Oil Company of Liberia. As I have unequivocally stated, and I am now emphatically restating, I have done nothing wrong. Again, I state, I have done nothing wrong. While all evidence exists that the media outlets responsible for spreading this misinformation are simply tabloids, and not one of the more reputable brick and mortar media houses, we deem it prudent, as is within my judicial responsibility, to get ahead of this mail and nip it in the bud. Unfounded allegations. Let me be unquestionably clear that the allegation of squandering of funds amounting to US 600,000 are baseless, malicious, unfounded and without any merit. At no point in my oversight of the National Oil Company of Liberia have I signed off on any disbursement of such fund to anybody. Didn't happen. These claims are only not false but are also deliberate attempt to tarnish a reputation built on integrity and dedication to national progress. I am further convinced that the actors behind this ruse have a more immediate attempt and intention to discredit the president's appointment of officer in charge and to undermine the amount of consideration His Excellency gave to making this decision. With this realization, I am even more compelled to address the issues as I am now doing. Gratitude. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to the Minister of Information and the leader of the civil society for their unwavering support during this time. Their recognition for the truth and their vocal opposition to this unfounded accusation underscored their commitment to justice and transparency. To those media institutions who demonstrated remarkable professionalism in investi investigative journalism by seeking us out and making inquiries into the fidelity of the story. While many of us may assume that this is to be intuitive standard practice on the part of the media, this fiasco and the related publications are evident that it is just not so. What we see instead 
is a sort of yellow journalism that is, that is a characteristic of the smear campaign. So, I really appreciate those institutions who exercise due diligence to uphold both the integrity and dignity of the fourth estate. The facts. Let's set the record straight now on what has happened at Local. To set the record straight, here are the factual details of the project's progression and financial transaction prior to my appointment as officer in charge. On July 13, 2023, NoCal entered into a contract with BMC Group Incorporated for an office construction project valued initially at $2.9 million. When the contract was initially signed, it was signed for $2.9 million. This contract was due to process and appears to have adhered to PPCC guidelines. The first payment to BMC, totaling $1.4 million in change, was made on July 17, 2023, signifying the commencement of the contractual obligation. This payment was made in two separate checks. After construction began in November 2023, again long before I even went to NOCA, this, this amendment approved by the PPCC increased the contract to a value of $4.5 million. <clears throat> so when the contract was signed, it was 2.9, right? The contract was amended later on. And now the contract value stands at $4.5 billion for the headquarters being built. This new amount represents an increment of, of $1.5 million or 51.2% that was added to the original contract. Jake Cavacoli was nowhere around. NOCAL hired TSC Global as its project consultant with the primary responsibility of monitoring, evaluating, and satisfying that BMC was carrying out the project according to the terms and specification of the contract. On December 15, an additional payment of 796000 was made to BMC bringing the total disbursement to 2.2 million, which accounted for 50% of the revised contract value. So that's how much money NOCA had paid to VMC. And guess what? I didn't make the payment. I was nowhere at NOCA. It is critical to note that these developments, including financial transactions, occurred before my appointment. My official responsibilities commenced on January 29, 2024, by which time the project was well advanced and the outline payments had been completed. Again, I've made no payments to BMC as some of these institutions have been reporting. None of that is true. In continuation of the facts stated above, let me tell you what I've done. I've paid 6.7% of employees' educational benefits, which my predecessor did not see as a priority over a five-year period. The leadership of the company at the time claimed it was executing austerity measures, and educational benefits were not as critical for the, for the operational expense of no cap. The institution, of my, the, the, the institution upon my arrival owed the employees 133,000 US dollars in educational benefits, which they did not pay for five years. So when I took over, 
The employees speed up with me. And so we found reason to pay some of this amount, which total 9,000 US dollars. Now you will see a cancel check of that amount. If you want to see it, we'll show it to you. And that amount was paid against employee benefits. In conclusion, I remain unwavering in my oversight of this very important national corporation. This is my commitment to the betterment of NOCAL and, by extension, our beloved country, Liberia. I understand how I may appear to be an easy target on account of my relationship of His Excellency Joseph U. Mabonka. But no one should be fooled by this. This is not a weakness, but a strength that, I, that, that encourages me to be extra diligent and to work hard to achieve the pillars of the rescue agenda for Liberia. I challenge you to provide to the public any record that shows that I have squandered 600,000 at the National Oil Company of Liberia. Those of you who are spreading this information and can't come up with proof, I say you shut up until you got proof. I remain focused on our goals and will not be swayed by malicious narratives. We call on the media to uphold the principles of fair and accurate reporting and to refrain from participating in character assassination. Under my leadership, the National Oil Company of Liberia remains dedicated to the responsible development and management of Liberia's energy resources, driving growth and ensuring the prosperity of our nation. I thank you.